Nobody's gonna care about this, but I really wanna get a little lav mic. So that way, I don't know, I can do like funny things with it. Hi, my name is Alex. Welcome to my channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content from me, hit that subscribe button down below as well as that bell icon if you want to be notified every single time I post. Also, a large percentage of you guys who watch my videos are not subscribed to me. It's free and I would really love it if you would join the community. I talk about acne and lifestyle related things and today I really wanted to talk about my ADHD. I'm still kind of going through a journey of learning more about my ADHD, but through this, and if you also have ADHD, I have hyper focus. So if I get interested in a topic, I tend to really get tunnel vision and want to dive into it. Uh, which means that when I, weirdly enough, remembered that I had ADHD, um, that meant that I really wanted to learn more about it and how my brain works and how to function better. These tips are just things that I've been implementing and that I've been using over the past few months uh, as I've learned more about ADHD. This is not uh, a diagnosis or a treatment plan or anything like that. If you do want to get more uh, specific treatment towards you, I would see a therapist, but I know that not everybody has access to proper health care in the United States. Because I have ADHD, I will spend a lot of my time and my life trying to be organized. Um, I, a couple of months ago, did this office makeover where I completely transformed my office and it looked absolutely beautiful. I. Uh, tend to get overwhelmed by visual clutter and I also have a lot of projects um, which I think that I am going to come back to like tomorrow or the next day and then it just keeps compounding so even in my office I I'm not clean um, you can see it in my videos sometimes or my vlogs that it's not perfect and it's a work in progress your life and your organization and all of these tips you will be applying for the rest of time. They are not something that you do and just boom, it's all done and it'll be perfect for the rest of your life. It's something that you have to continue working at, like the dishes or laundry, um, and it'll probably take more effort to be organized and uh, it'll also take more effort to, um, here are my nine tips that I have learned and that I implement to be more organized with ADHD. Visual reminders. Uh, in general, people with ADHD have a hard time with object permanence, meaning if you put a project away in a bin in the closet, you're going to forget about it. I like to have visual reminders. For me, this kind of, uh, is really prominent in my bathroom drawer. So I have everything sectioned out in a way where I can see it and use it easily and I don't get overwhelmed by clutter. These little bins that I got were from Target. So I have rearranged this multiple times. Right now I have my all of my teeth stuff in one little area and then I also have my weekly skincare. This is treatments and things that I only want to do once or twice a week and I keep that separate from my main skincare so that way I don't get overwhelmed by number of products and, and different things that I need to do and then I also don't lose skincare items and forget that I have them at the same time. Then I also have my deodorants and perfumes together. I keep this little uh, head wrap in there as well. My main skincare is at the bottom, kind of front and center because I use those things the most. Same with my deodorant, my toothpaste and toothbrush. So that's why those things are um, 
at the, the very front of the drawer and usually the stuff that I'm currently using in skincare is right on top but all of these things I will use on a regular basis. Keeping things really organized but also being able to see them very easily gives your brain something visually to remind you to do something. So I have gone back and forth of like filling up a calendar with a bunch of to-do lists or putting reminders on mirrors, but if it's not staring me right in the face, I will completely forget about it. Number two, schedule, time, and set reminders. So for me, I started doing this where I felt that cleaning could get overwhelming, where I was taking an hour or several hours or a day to just clean my house. And then all of the rest of the week, I didn't feel great about my house because I wasn't keeping up with it. So instead, I decided that I would take 15 to 30 minutes every single day to clean. Setting those timers and that time block has really helped my mental health be able to break things down into sections and say that this isn't going to last forever. I also have been doing this with food and break timers. I have, if you have a watch, this is really beneficial. If you have hyper focus like I do, you can set reminders for food. You can do this on your phone. I do this with Google Calendar as well, or you can just set daily rem like daily timers or alarms like you would to wake up. I also have a, a Fitbit notification to when to go to bed. So at 9.30 every single day, that goes off and it kind of triggers something in my brain that says, so I'm cognizant of what time it is because I've definitely fallen down a rabbit hole of falling asleep on the couch or binge watching TV till one, till one in the morning. Um, so setting those food and break timers are really, really helpful, especially if you have any kind of health issues. Number three, delegate and prioritize what matters to you. So this is actually a new one for me that I'm trying to remind myself of regularly that uh, not all adult things can be meaningful to you. If you're not interested in owning your own house, then you really don't need that information in your brain. Number four, make a list for cleaning. So this is actually something that I've been doing the past few months. This is probably one of the first tips that I learned along with setting timers for cleaning, which is to break things down into chunks. I actually kind of got this idea from Jordan Page and I will leave a um, link to my version of the list down in the description box as well. Um, and basically what I do is I take each room and I write down everything that I need to do in that room. And you can do this on a, like a weekly basis. You can have just a running list like I do. And I do this on my iPad in GoodNotes, but you can have a piece of paper, you can um, have something laminated on your fridge if you need that visual reminder. Um, you can just have a checklist on your phone and then uncheck them at the end of the week. So I went through, wrote down every single kind of room or section or compartment of my house. When you first start doing this system, I would definitely suggest walking around your house and writing down the things that you see. This system can also apply to other parts of your life. Um, I haven't done this practically, but I think that you could also make similar lists and break it down by chunks. Uh, in a way, I do this kind of idea with like YouTube videos. Number five managing your own space. This is something that I've been doing recently when I feel so overwhelmed about cleaning and organizing things that I sometimes feel like I've failed that day because my house doesn't look perfect. And in reality, nobody's house ever looks perfect. Um, I think that sometimes it's hard for me to see past those things and I started cleaning what I could control. 
and I live with somebody else and if you do as well this may apply to you where I can't always control where my husband puts his clothes or how he chooses to organize his closet so I've taken a kind of moment to sort of think that okay that is his space and this is mine. You can also kind of combat this by delegating certain space. So in our entryway, we have a little boot tray that shoes will always go in and we also have baskets. This also kind of goes along with having a home for everything or having a space for like little catch-all kind of thing. Number six, minimize products and routines. This is something that I really like to do with uh, getting ready in the morning, uh, something that I find very uh, impactful to me because I, again, can get overwhelmed by choices uh, and information. I like to kind of, I like to kind of narrow my choices every single day when I'm getting dressed, doing skincare, doing my makeup. Uh, so that way I don't get overwhelmed by those things and spend all of my decisions on just those simple tasks like getting ready. Um, food is another one that I have a hard time with. With food, I like to write down the things that we do like to eat. Um, so like going by sections of a grocery store and just write down like what kind of meats do you like to have and want to have on hand? What kind of canned like beans or grains do you like and want to have on hand? Uh, and same with like produce and stuff like that and finding things then you narrow down the amount of choices that you have. Even though you have a list of a bunch of food, there's a lot of things you could do with that. Number seven is to create structure for yourself. Uh, if you have a job, you kind of have some built-in structure as well as if you go to school. I don't have either of those things right now. So I um, am home most of the time and I am only accountable to myself so a lot of times this is really challenging to try to get things done because I can get sucked into different projects or TV or YouTube or games and stuff like that because they have that instant gratification element so I really like starting off my day by planning and I have a digital planner and I write down all the things that I like my routines that are non-negotiable my breaks and lunches and my evening routine and then any appointments that I have that day all of the other space is free for me to do whatever I want with. So if I have five hours of time on a Monday and decide that I want to play Animal Crossing that day, I can do that as long as I also am not neglecting all of those other categories of meals and my morning routine and my evening routine. So everybody deserves a day to just play Animal Crossing for five hours. But make sure you're taking care of yourself. Number eight, have a visual and a digital planner. If you're somebody who likes physical planners, um, but you feel like you aren't organized, um, having both will really help you. I recently got an iPad, it was my birthday present, and I'm trying to go to school right now. The way you can kind of compartmentalize these things is visual planners stay at home. So anything that either has to do with your home or you won't need to reference when you're out in public, then you can keep on your visual planner, like your random running to-do list or um, how you want to break up your day that day. Um, if you have actual set appointments, you keep those in your digital planner. And your digital planner is everything that you would need to reference when you are out in public. So, so this would be any appointments, grocery lists, any kind of pertinent information that you might need to reference. So sometimes I put my schedule in my Google Calendar if uh, I'm like going to the grocery store but I also have other stuff that I need to do 
that day and I want to make sure that I'm on time so I give myself a certain time to go to the grocery store. And my last tip, number nine, is to seek help from a support group, from a therapist, your support system. So I'm personally uh, a part of a Facebook group for women with ADHD, which I will leave in the description. Um, I have a really great support system that I can um, refer to and talk to. Not everybody has those luxuries, but uh, if you do, I would definitely use them to the best of your abilities. Another one that you might not have access to, which is a therapist. Not everybody has great health care or health coverage to be able to talk to a therapist, but if you um, have the ability to, I would definitely recommend it. I just recently reached out to one uh, and am now going to have weekly meetings which I'm very happy about. Alright you guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm so happy that uh, you're here and that you clicked on this. Um, if you liked this content, please give it a thumbs up so I know to make more. If you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. And if you really want to see more from me, make sure you hit that bell icon so you get notified every single time that I post. I also have an Instagram account called Health and Fit Alex that I will be leaving in the description box as well. That is all for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day. Bye.